Hello, welcome to Dungeon Drawers Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Today, for our latest Encel mo- uh, Cinema Month review, we're reviewing Nicholas Whining Reference Pusher, which is a 1996 crime thriller mo- movie starring Kim uh, Bonia as Frank Sacco Burek as Milo, Laura Bresbick as Vic. Slavko Lobovic as Rododon and Mads Mikkelsen as Tony. This is one of his earliest roles, Mad Mikkelsen. Though if you're a fan of Mad Mikkelsen, Mad Mikkelsen, he's not in the movie that much. Like he's like, I would say he's like in the first like 40 minutes or so, and then like he's not even. I think it's like the first like half hour. <laughs> um. So the movie it's basically about this drug uh, dealer name uh, Frank who is a drug dealer in um, Den- uh, Denmark uh, I think it's Copenhagen I'm 100% sure who's like oh by the way this is Nicholas Winding Redfern's first movie right and uh, fun back funny backstory to this movie is that um, he what he uh, for his school uh, film school final project he made this short film that was ba- called Pusher, where he basically just uh, ripped off like John Woo, uh, like um, gunfighter movies, like uh, Hard Boiled and uh, what was it called, The Killer, and um, took it to a f- the Denmark film uh, scene to g- to get a movie made, and he took that money and made this movie, which is nothing like a John Woo movie at all, and I even like watch um i don't know if it was john yeah it was a john woo movie before i watched this i watched a john woo movie called uh, better tomorrow which is uh kind of similar to this but a lot more action which if you haven't seen a better tomorrow it's on you you can find all three movies on youtube for free <laughs> which is honestly it's a better movie than this i know a lot of people love this movie but like i don't know uh i'll get into why i don't like the movie but yeah it's basically about this drug pusher who is kind of a piece of shit he he he's um he's working for i think there's these serbian guys i'm not 100 sure who are his drug supplier who work out of like a restaurant his best friend is tony which is mad mickelson who is basically a wigger, <laughs> a Danish wigger, uh, and um, and he's basically like the Randall of this movie, like one of Nicholas Winding Refn's um, inspira- inspirations for this movie was uh, Clerks, Kevin Smith's Clerks, which inspired a bunch of movies, by the way. Um, so like, yeah, what, ha- what ended up happening is that out of nowhere, he. Um, he get he gets a meeting with uh, this guy who's a Swedish guy who um, he knew from prison who wants like a shitload of heroin. I think it's heroin. They said brown sugar, so I'm I'm assuming brown sugar is code for heroin, and like he needs it like 200 grams by tomorrow, right? So he goes to his drug supplier at, uh, to get to get the to get the dope when he already owes his drug supplier like 50 grand which why he didn't give it to him i i think it's because like he spent most of the money because like he he had like a drug deal where like the guy short handed him like 500 like 5,000, so he had like forty five thousand. he could have gave to his like um drug supplier but he just thought but he i guess he didn't make a profit so he's like oh, i'll fucking pay him later <laughs> which is did not work out for him so yeah he he falls for an obvious trap for the cops they even know he gets busted by the cops but he he take he while he's getting chased by the cops he runs into like a, a a lake or something so he all the dope went into the the, the lake so he he can't get busted for like possession or whatever because they don't have the evidence right but they know about um they know about his partner tony who what who wasn't at the meeting and they know about it was 200 grams so that should have put him which they tried the cops trick him into thinking like oh tony ran him out it's like retard it was obviously the swedes you were set up because they wanted the cops wanted to know his supplier which like what is up happening is he goes to 
the I, I assume there's Serbian guys, I don't know. Tell them, hey, I, I lost the money, I lost the dope. And the the, the rest of this mo uh, the movie is him trying to get the money together, but fucking up at every turn. Uh, he also has this hooker girlfriend um, whose dog died, and he was going to... There's a point where he was going to run away with her, right? And um, t take the money and run, but like, you know, he gets a call from the his uh, supplier saying, hey, let's make a deal, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when really, like, they're setting up, like, a kill spot for him. <laughs> so, he, yeah, he, so, what, what ends up happening is, like, his girlfriend steals his money and just fucking runs off. <laughs> and, like, the end, the movie just ends with the characters, like, fucked. He's basically fucked. He should have taken his gun and killed the, killed, like, uh, the guy, his, um, the guys right away or offered to like rob a bank or something for him to pay, like offer like to do some kind of job or something to make up for the money or or he could have just went to the police and it's like hey i'll give you up the suppliers if you give me free immunity or something i don't fucking know which he would have been known as a snitch but you know whatever right i don't fucking know so like the movie it's just the thing the thing about this movie cinematography wise it it's pretty crappy but it's like the 90s the music's not great. The dialogue is okay. I thought the dialogue was fine. But it's the thing where you have this movie that's so fucking um, hard to watch. Because, like, you're... the Because the it just gives you that feeling of anxiety. Like, when you, if you ever had that feeling where you had a problem that, that just... That you couldn't solve, right? You couldn't solve right away. And, like, you had the... You had the it just like gnaws at you like the anxiety and all that bullshit like 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 the last time i had to take my dog to the vet over a problem i had i didn't sleep the night before so it's like that kind of thing where like there's even a scene where like he could one night which the movie takes place over a week one night like he didn't even sleep he was just watching tv all day <laughs> his girlfriend asked him what movie he was watching he's like ah some shitty movie with johnny depp and he's like who's that <laughs> it's like dumb danish horror <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I don't know. The movie, I just... It's the thing where the character, Kim, is not that likable. Like, at one point, he hits his girlfriend for, like, no, no fucking reason. But his girlfriend, like, like is kind of a cunt. <laughs> but yeah, she, she's all fucked up from the de death of her dog. Which, like, I don't know how a fucking dog dies that fucking fast. Because apparently, like... He puked, and then, like, he had to have an operation, and he immediately dies. Like, like obviously, the dumb cunt, like, fed the dog, like, um, something poisonous, and, like, the dog died. Which usually takes, like, weeks, but, like, if, depending on what it, what the chick fed the dog, it could, it could be really fast, like, uh, chocolate or something. Which, they don't explain what, ha why, how she killed her dog king, which, like, poor doggo. I don't know. I if I were to give this movie a, a rating, I would say if you're a fan of crime thrillers, I would say it's at least like a six out of ten. I really, it's the thing where the movie, more of the movie should have been Kim and like Tony hanging out and shit. Because that the the scenes where Kim and Tony are hanging, Kim, I mean, well, his name is Frank in the movie, but like Kim's the, the actor's name. What, um, yeah. So like, I would say, yeah, if. The, the movie should have been more scenes with them hanging out. And uh but like uh if you're a fan of Tony in this movie, the there is a trilogy of these movies where the second movie is uh stars uh, Maz Milk Mickelson as Tony. And you have the third movie is about Milo, which I don't know if I'm gonna watch the other two movies. And maybe I will. Not for this uh maybe maybe I'll watch um Pusher too because he gets he has a cuck he, he he's kind of he's a cuck in that movie <laughs> he has like he he's like uh, put in this position where he has to raise a son where it's like not his or some shit like that so I don't know I might review that but yeah this movie is a six out of ten uh it's the thing yeah it's the thing where like yeah if they they should half the movie which this is like um, this movie is like almost two hours by the way it's like an hour and fifteen minutes or so if there was more scenes where like you had like you got to know the character right um like got to know the character having fun hanging out 
which was part of his problem because like he, I, it looks like he pisses a lot of his money away, which was kind of fucking dumb in your, uh, like uh, yeah, <laughs> in your profession. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like if Mad Mickelson should have been in the movie more, but yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a six out of ten. My next Incel Cinema Month um, movie is going to be on Friday. Movie review is going to be on Friday. What we're going to review, I have no idea. We have... What movies we have left are Only God Forgives, Blade Runner 2040 something. We got 10 to Midnight. And we have... Um, what was it called? Last American Vir Virgin, which I don't really want to watch, but... But I don't know. So, look, I don't know. We're going to have some more good movies, okay? <laughs> if you have any suggestions for, like, incel movie, movies that star kind of incel-like characters or loner or loners, like, let me know in the comments.